A group of Canadian scientists are eagerly awaiting delivery of samples from an asteroid collected nearly half a million kilometers from Earth. The samples were gathered by a spacecraft called OSIRIS-REx. Alan Hildebrand, a University of Calgary planetary scientist, is in line for one of these samples. He says studying the asteroid named Bennu should shed light on the formation of Earth and the solar system. Canadian labs are eligible to receive samples of Bennu because of Canada's investment of $61 million in the OSIRIS program. OSIRIS is scheduled to parachute its package of asteroid samples into the atmosphere on September 24th. It's only the third time that scientists have been able to get material directly from an asteroid, and it's expected to be by far the largest haul yet, with as much as 200 grams. Well, joining us now to discuss this out-of-this-world delivery is Dr. Alan Hildebrand himself. Dr. Hildebrand, welcome to Forum Daily. Pleasure to be here. Now, uh, this sample, the retrieving of the sample, it's uh, quite a long uh, process. It took 13 years. It's 13 years in the making, sir. So can you tell us a little bit more about the significance of this moment for the scientific community? Well, we're, of course, getting a little bit better in terms of technology growth. So we're dealing with fundamental questions. What's the solar system made of? And so we're able nowadays to go out and take a sample of an asteroid and see what it's really made of. Quite the technological advancement there. Now, it's interesting that this is the only th- only the third time that scientists have been able to get material directly from an asteroid, Dr. Hildebrand. Uh, why do you think that is? Well, it's, uh, of course, not cheap. And as you said, you do need a, a technology level. So we've been getting better at this. Of course, the space age got started in the 1950s, but we've we've come a long way in. Just like your, you know, your cell phone now has all these technological marvels, those translate into, you know, spacecraft development and command and control systems. A long way indeed, Dr. Hildebrand. Now, this asteroid is said to be connected to the early history of the solar system and Earth, according to you. So how do we know all of this to be true? And can you tell us a little bit more about Bennu and why it was selected? Well, we know the material on the, the asteroid, the rocks there are probably old because almost all the meteorites that fall on our planet, when we date them, date from the, the start of the solar system, four and a half billion years ago. They're they're slightly, very slightly older than Earth itself. That's really interesting. We can look at the, you know, the spectra of those meteorites. So Bennu, the asteroid with a telescope, you can take its spectra. And so we can see it's, you know, relatively comparable minerals making it up. But Bennu spectrally is actually a bit different than any meteorite we have. It's called a a B class, B as in boy. So spectra is a little different. So why go to Benno? That's one reason right there. It's it's material we don't have in our meteorite collections yet. And we'd like to know what's different about it uh, in terms of composition, in terms of its mineralogy. Other reasons to go, it's a very dark asteroid. It has uh, organic compounds, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, in addition to rocky minerals. So we can learn about the, you know, the development of uh, the chemistry that happened on it when the rock reacted with water, which presumably happened in the outer part of the solar system. And Bennu happens to have uh, traveled inwards in the solar system, close to Earth, so it's possible for us to send a spacecraft there. We, it would be tough for us to send a spacecraft to the outer solar system and bring back a piece. And the last reason, Bennu is a near-Earth asteroid, and there's a very small chance, uh, a few centuries in the future, that it might impact the Earth. So from studying its surface today, we know how it interacts with sunlight that slightly changes its orbit. So... Uh, we will know whether or not it will impact the Earth in the future.